So let's do a complicated convolution. And we're going to do a triangle times a decaying exponential. And this is our equation right here. But rather than our regular triangle, right, I'm going to multiply it by 2, which is kind of like you could think of it as a gain of 2. And then rather than our decaying exponential where rc equals 1, I'm going to use omega naught, right? But I'm also going to multiply it by 2, which is a gain of 2. Now, uh, just so you know, tau is 1 over omega naught equals rc in this example. Now, there's many first order systems that are not RC circuits, right? You could have an LC circuit or a spring and a damper system, right? Or no, uh, a damper and a mass system. So anyway, as I've always done before, I expand out these convolutions and find the common you know, the common theme, if you will, which in this case is a ramp convolved with a decaying exponential, right? So if I do that, right, I'll have 2 times z of t minus 2zt delayed by 1 plus zt minus 2. All I have to do is find this and then scale, delay, and sum everything, and I've got it. Now, now this, you know, somewhat difficult question if you've never done it before is what's the best way I can use the convolution integral right and this is really just minus omega naught times tau right I can integrate the step response in time because if you integrate the impulse response you get the step response if you integrate the step response you get the ramp response and then you can use the Laplace transform method, where you take the Laplace transform of the ramp and the decaying exponential, multiply them together, and then take the inverse Laplace transform. So let's see. Let's just try to quickly evaluate which one's the best. Now these are just like rough notes, right, as me trying to figure out which way is the best way to go. That's really the important thing is seeing how much, you know, work it takes for me to get each answer. So with the Laplace transform method, I need partial fraction expansion, right? Which I can use uh, SymPy to do, but um, because I don't do a lot of partial fraction expansion, I always have to look it up, right, to make sure I'm doing it right. Um, so even though people tend to favor this method, remembering how to do partial fraction expansion can take time. All right. In this case, I just integrated the step response, right, and got uh, an equation. And that turned out to be the easiest way. I didn't have to remember anything. It was all right there. I didn't have to look it up. I mean, I should say it was easy to remember. I didn't have to look anything up. So, um, by far, the most difficult method is the convolution integral. And even when you're doing the convolution integral, there's choices that you can make on which is u and which is, and which is v, right? And so you can make a choice where it won't work at all, right? So you can see how many, you know, lines of equation it takes me to get going. And that's really the important thing. And then it actually takes me two slides. And it is really easy to mess up. I probably messed this up five times trying to do it, OK? Because um, in, in my, you know, what I do, I don't need a lot of partial fraction expansion. Now, maybe some people do, right? I'm just saying, for me, doing that simple integral was the best way. So now, before we plot, we want to get an idea of what we're going to plot. So we have a triangle, and we have a decaying exponential. We have a time where they're not overlapping, right? Then we have a time where one line is overlapping, right? 
and so the area is increasing. And then we have it where the area is starting to decrease, right? And then an area where there's nothing, right? So it goes up and comes down. And I've drawn it with these kind of curvy lines because I'm integrating a linear times an exponential, right? If I were to come back to this equation, right? Here's my linear, here's a decaying exponential, and here's a constant part. So, you know, it has a linear part and it has an exponential, a decaying exponential. So if I substitute all those values of z, right, this would be the full-blown equation, right, which is a lot to write. But actually, if you're programming it, you just define z and then uh, as a function and then just go from there, as you'll see from the, the code. Now, I wanted to plot out just this function, right, just to see what it was like. And at time equals 0, this is 0, this is 1 over 5, and this is minus 1 over 5, so you get 0. Then I thought, well, what about at 1? Because 1 is actually 5 tau for this system. So this goes to 0, right? So if I substitute 1, t equals 1, this is almost 0, and I get minus 1 over 5. When I work all that out and scale it by 4, I get 16 divided by 5, which is about 3, right? So that's that point. And so from now on, because this part is effectively 0, I have a linear equation, right? So I'll just draw it, you know, linearly like that. And I just draw this as some kind of exponential, right, that kind of an exponential increase that decays to a linear increase. So now when I want to put the sketch together, right, here's ZT, and that goes on upwards forever. But then here's minus 2ZT delayed. And you can see I get 0. Then I get ZT. Then I get the sum of these, and this is dragging this down. And it'll keep going, right? So in order to flatten it out, I have to add another Z, uh, T delayed by 2. So that's really what I should get. And, you know, the peak should be around 3. And the width is really the non-zero time here, which is around 1, and the non-zero time of the triangle, which is 2, so for 3. So I've drawn it a little off scale, right? It should start and end at 3. So I could actually just move this 2 back a little bit, all right? So let's look at the video. And so here's our last, you know, it's non-overlapping, so it's 0. And now we're increasing. Now the area comes down. And even see there's a, this is going a little bit fast, but there's a little kink you'll see. That's really hard to draw by hand. But you can see that, um, you know, at 1, yeah, I'm about 3.2. And then it rolls off, right? And, it, and it's on for about 3. So for a hand plot, you know, anything kind of close to that would be fine. Because this is much more complicated than the other ones, um, you know, for grading-wise, one would be a lot more forgiving, right? But really, it would start at zero, go up to a value, and come back, right? You should have exponential-like curves and linear parts and, you know, things like that. Okay, but it would never cross. This shape never goes below zero and comes back. All right? So, again, the big takeaway here is you take a, a very complicated thing, break it up into a common function, and then when you have a complicated integral, right, you might have three different ways of doing it, right? And if 
you know, if all of a sudden it's taking two pages to do, maybe try a different method, right? I finished, you know, I used all three, but really once I found the, I should have stopped when I did the, uh, you know, just integrating the step response because that one just turned out to be the fastest, okay? But on, you know, on exams and homework, yeah, I want you to do the simplest way possible only because you'll more likely get it right, right? But, um, and sometimes you will be asked to do the Laplace transform or the time or the, or use the convolution integral. But that's, you know, only when you're actually told to use a particular method is when you have to do it. But the other thing is, is always do a rough sketch, right? Before you, you actually start to plot it to make sure that uh, things make sense. All right, that's that.